Hey everyone, one of the coolest technologies that's totally revolutionized my business and the way I do audio is something that's called Dante. It's an audio network that's uh, something that's sent over Ethernet. It's very, very cool and like I say, it's totally changed my business. There's a lot of advantages to using it and it doesn't cost near as much to get into as a lot of people might think. So with that, let's actually take a look at what Dante is. So Dante is a technology from a company called Audinate out of Australia. It's been around for several years now. It's not exactly brand new. But it's starting to make some significant inroads into the industry, especially, it's been in audio for a long time, but it's really starting to make some inroads into video production as well. It offers a lot of cool advantages that you don't get with old school analog. For example, you're not dealing with the heavy multi-core snake cables that we used to use in the audio industry years and years ago. Those things were incredibly heavy, incredibly expensive, just not a lot of fun to work with. These days, sending audio, multi-channel audio over a long distance can be done with a single Ethernet cable. And if you want to go even farther, you can actually break out a fiber cable and go for really, really long distances over a tiny, tiny cable. Gigabit Ethernet has the capacity to handle over 512 channels of audio just over the one cable. And so that's something we couldn't even dream of back in the analog days. And back in, when I was doing analog, I'd be lucky to have a 32 channel snake. So I'd have 32 channels coming from stage back to my mixer and maybe eight channels going back. With Dante, 500, 500 channels is not only totally possible, it's actually very easy to do and doesn't require any specialized equipment other than the Dante equipment itself. I use mixers from Yamaha and Behringer and using Dante, those talk to one another without any sort of issue. The audio just sent, sent back and forth. It's really easy to configure. All you have to do is add the card into the device, plug it into an Ethernet network, and those devices are talking to each other. And you can send audio both directions, and it's very high quality. This audio is 48 kilohertz, 96 kilohertz, even 192 kilohertz, depending on what equipment you've got, and at least 24-bit as well. So it's better than CD quality. It's basically the same level of audio quality that we're used to working with video at SDI. Another really cool thing about Dante is that a lot of venues around the world are already using it. So, for example, here in my area, most of the venues here actually do have Dante networks already. So for me, as a video producer, it's really easy. I just pull in my trailer, plug in an Ethernet cable into their Dante network, and then I have access to all of their audio channels. Not just their left and right stereo mix or whatever, but I've got access to all of their source feeds as well. So any individual microphone, whatever... Uh, computer, you name it, all that stuff is available for me in my trailer, so it makes it really easy for me to build a separate mix than what's going into the house feed. For example, with video, it's, we often want to have audience reaction or whatever in there, but they don't do that front of house. So we'll set up a couple of mics, plug it into the Dante network, and then I can bring in this, the house stereo feed, add those ambience mics on top of it, and it's all done over Ethernet. I don't have to run any additional cables or anything like that. So most of the time when people talk about Dante, they're probably thinking in terms of an audio mixer and a stage box. So I've got an audio mixer set up here, and I've got a couple stage boxes on the network, out of sight here on this video. One of them actually just below camera here. What we do with these normally would be to take our stage box, stick it backstage at an event, plug in all our audio sources, send those audio over Dante to our mixer. The mixer might be back of the room, could be in another room if, if, if we're unlucky. Uh, basically send all those audio sources to a mixer over an Ethernet network. And then you can build your mix on here and then the mix goes out via Dante back to the stage box where it plugs into a sound system uh, for playing through speakers for whatever. So that's the most most traditional setup for a Dante network. And I wanted to show you guys just a little bit about what that looks like. Uh, especially in the video production environment, because it is, it can be a little bit different. Like, we not, we're not necessarily building the audio mix for front of house. We're probably building a mix for uh, video, for live stream, whatever. One of the coolest advantages of Dante is the ability to route audio anywhere you want to. So you can send audio from any source to any destination, and you can send audio from any source to any number of destinations. So if you want to have an audio mixer, main mix, left and right mix, go multiple places, you can do that. Dante allows you to send it to as many destinations as you possibly want. So I wanted to show you guys today some of the kind of standard ways that Dante is used, as well as uh, a very basic Dante system, and as well as demonstrate some of the software that Audinate has made available in order to try and manage and maintain your audio network uh, in the Dante domain. So with that said, let's actually take a look at one of the more simple setups that you can do. This first one is actually a product from Audinate themselves. They, they make a handful of uh, products that are available for in, in the retail space. This is what they call their AVO adapters. This is a two analog input adapter. So it has on it two XLR audio inputs and 
then on the other side, that's, that's your Ethernet connection. So you plug that into your Ethernet network, plug this into whatever sound source you want. Although, I should mention this is only line level, so you're not going to be able to plug a microphone directly in here. But if you have uh, a mixing console or whatever you want to be able to plug in, go into a venue that only has analog, they don't have Dante, plug this into one of their aux ends or uh, a mult uh, of their main, main feed, and all of a sudden you've got your Dante audio on your network. It makes it real easy. They have they have similar devices for output. Like here is their output adapter, which is basically two XLRs again, same thing. And again, just plugs into the network. And this is one of my favorites. This is actually a USB adapter. So if you want to get audio out of a computer, you just plug in USB into that computer and then plug into your Dante network. And this is actually bi-directional, so if somebody wanted to get a copy of the program feed, um, the audio program feed, out of, out of your mixer, you can pipe that in here. But the main advantage to this thing is that it's really easy to connect in someone's laptop or whatever into your Dante network and not have to worry about installing any software on there. This just takes whatever audio is on the computer, puts it on the Dante network so that you can route it to wherever you want, to your own mixer or whatever the case may be. One really cool piece of software that Audinate makes available, it's called Dante Virtual Sound Card. It basically pretends to be a sound card on your computer and sends that audio out onto the Dante network so that you can send it to your mixer or set of speakers or recorder or whatever you want, which makes it really easy to take computer audio from any source that you want, whether that be some video playback software or audio playback software or even something like Zoom. You can use this Dante Virtual Sound Card software in order to get that audio on the network. I've done quite a few Zoom meetings where I use this. Which I'm able to take the audio from the Zoom caller or the Zoom panel or group of people or whatever, send that into my audio mixer, build a mix specifically for them to hear and send the audio back to Zoom and do that all over Dante. I don't have any audio cables hooked up anywhere. It's all done exclusively over that Ethernet Dante network. Now, let's just take a quick look at this. Works with both Windows and Mac. They have versions for both. And on Windows, you can choose what type of interface it is, whether WDM or ASIO. WDM is the one that works with Windows itself. So if you just want to take all of your audio from Windows and send it out to the Dante network, you can choose WDM. And then ASIO is something that's used more by things like uh, audio recording software. So if you happen to be using Audition or something else like that in order to re record or play back audio, you can create an ASIO interface through the Dante software and then all that audio can be placed on the network which allows you to mix it however you want to on an external mixer. Or if you want to come back the other direction and record audio from your Dante sources, so microphones, mixers, whatever you want, you can record those as individual tracks in your software without having to create a very expensive audio interface with multiple channels. And because it stays in the digital domain, you don't have any conversion issues. It's converted from analog when it's converted to Dante, and then it stays in the digital domain the entire time. You might notice here that there's a drop-down that allows you to choose how many channels you want, and, and the Dante Virtual Sound Card software actually allows you to do up to 64 inputs and 64 outputs, all in software, and it makes it very, very cool for doing multi-track. All right, so this Dante Virtual Sound Card software, it's not free. It does cost a little bit of money. It's $30 per computer, uh, which is not terrible, but if you have to buy it for a lot of computers, I suppose that could add up a little bit. They also have a 30-day license that you can get for $10, which allows you to use the software for short term on a computer where you know you're not going to be using it long term. I should warn you, though, that once activated on a computer, the software is permanently tied to that computer. You can't move it around from one computer to another. So if you are in a situation where you do need to use different computers, the Dante USB or Audinate AVO adapter is probably a better solution for that particular need. Now, some people have asked, how many channels can you actually include with Dante? Well, with a gigabit network, you're able to get about 512. For a 100 megabit network, you can do up to 30. But in reality, we really should be running gigabit with this. Not only does it allow more channels, it also keeps the latency down, the amount of delay from the time the audio enters the network until it exits the network. Uh, going with a higher speed gigabit network actually produces that latency quite a bit. So if you possibly can, you'll want to use a gigabit network with your Dante gear. Now, what does it take in terms of hardware to actually do this particular workflow? So obviously we've got a mixer, and I have to have a mixer that's actually compatible with Dante. Not every mixer has, has support for it, but you get a mixer that has, that has support for Dante, and then very often you have to do an add-on card. Dante is not free. It's not, there's, there are some hardware costs in order to make it work, and so most mixers ship without the Dante support built right in. It's done with an expansion card. Now if we go over to 
the uh, Yamaha website, look at the TF3 or TF series mixer page on Yamaha's site. Scroll down. So here's the mixer. It's a TF5, TF3. That's the one I use in my trailer. TF1, the one I, one I have sitting on here on my desk. There's the stage box, the TO1608D, and I'll pull mine out here in a minute so you guys get a better look at that. And then here's the expansion card, so the NY64D. This card has actually been installed in the back of both my TF3 and my TF1, and that allows all of that audio from inside the mixer uh, to be put onto the Dante network and to bring audio from the Dante network back into the mixer. It supports 64 channels in each direction. In the Dante controller software, if you look across the top here, 64 channels there as the output, and then 64 channels here on input. Here in my trailer, I have a Behringer X32 rack mixer, and I have the Dante card for it. That card only supports 32 channels in and out. This varies by model. Uh, there's no hard, fast rule as to how many channels a mixer can actually support. Of course, you get into the big high-end mixers, you know, your Yamaha Ravage or the CL series or the QL series. Those handle more channels than my TF series does. Uh, so just something to be aware of when you're actually out shopping for equipment as to how many channels a given piece of equipment can actually support. I'll give you a brief look at the back of the mixer. So this is, mixer actually has that card installed, and that card lives right here. And you'll see that it actually has two interfaces. That's one of the cool things about most Dante gear. It, it normally has two Ethernet ports, and those are there for redundancy. So if you really can't have your audio act up or go down, you can run two separate networks that are based that are that have the Dante traffic on it. So two separate switches, separate cabling, uh, everything is duplicated basically. And then if there ever is a problem on your primary network, it automatically fails over to your secondary network without any drops in audio whatsoever. So no clicks, no buzzes, no anything. It just silently switches from one to the other. Installing the card is really easy. It's really just a matter of removing a couple of screws for the blank plate that came there in, from the factory, sliding the card in, and, and, and screwing it in place. And that's it. I should also mention, though, when you're, when you're getting this equipment, that you probably want to check for firmware updates, because Audinate adds new capabilities to Dante pretty frequently. They, within the last couple of years, added an entire new feature set from this piece of software. It's called Dante Domain Manager. I'm not going to cover that in this video, because that's pretty advanced. But they've added some really cool capabilities through firmware updates on the devices. And when you get some new equipment that supports Dante, you probably ought to check for firmware updates and install it. Here's some other equipment. This is a Yamaha TO1608D. This is a stage box, and this is how I normally get audio into my trailer. So I set up one of these things inside of a venue, plug it into my network, and then that gives me access to 16 audio inputs and then 8 audio outputs. And I can route those however I like and plug in anything I want. And one of the great things about the, some of the Yamaha gear, and some other manufacturers do this as well, but each of these inputs is both either line or mic level. Uh, you can plug in either type of source into any one of these jacks. They can also provide phantom power so that when you plug in a mic that requires that, like a condenser mic or whatever, you can, you can actually set that up. And that's done normally through the mixer itself. Once you plug in a compatible mixer and stage box into a Dante network, they'll normally set up and talk to each other so that you have full head amp control of these devices from the mixer itself. So I can turn phantom power on and off, I can adjust the gain, I can turn the high pass filter on and off as well. When you start to mix manufacturers though, things get a little bit more complicated. A Behringer mixer, for example, will not be able to control the head amp on a Yamaha stage box. Different manufacturers have approached this in a different way. For Yamaha, they actually have a piece of software that's free download from their website. It's called R Remote that gives you full head amp control of this unit. So this this TO1608D can actually be used with any manufacturer's mixer, uh, and you still retain the ability to control those head amps, though. If you're not using a Yamaha mixer, you'll be doing it through the R remote software instead of through the mixer interface itself. Here's the back panel. We've got a uh, power connection here, and then there's our primary Dante connection there, and then I have a secondary connection here. It's actually being used in daisy chain mode, which some devices support to connect over to my TF3. So instead of using it for redundancy, I'm actually using it to chain from one device into the next. 
And the way that all this routing is done is with a piece of software that's free, and it's called Dante Controller. So let's take a look. So if you want a little more detail, you can actually go to Audinate's website, and they have a, a site, and they have a page that's set up specifically to talk about the Dante Controller software. But I'm going to dive right in and let you, see, let you guys see my Dante Controller on my Dante network here. This is going to be a little bit hard to, hard to see. I apologize for that, but there's a lot of information here, and it's not, there's no easy way to, to hide it all. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my Dante transmitter and Dante receivers. So this is basically my Dante network, and you can see that each one of these uh, in the blue here is, is actually a piece of hardware, or uh, the Dante virtual sound card running on a computer, whatever. Uh, as you can see that I've got a lot of different sources, and then I've got a lot of different, de different des destinations. So this can be kind of overwhelming. There's a lot, of, lot, of, lot going on here. But let's simplify it a little bit. So let me, let me close this back up a little bit, and then I'll, I'll close up the receivers here as well. So let's take an example. Let's say that I want to take audio, an audio input from a stage box that I have. This is the uh, Yamaha TO-1608. I have two of those. I'll open up transmitters for number one. And then I want to route that to my main audio mixer here in my trailer, which is my Yamaha TF3. So I'll open up that particular group here under Dante receivers. Now, in order to make an audio connection, it's really just as simple as checking a box. So you notice as I move around here, it's got the darker blue lines indicating which channel I'm, I'm looking at for both the transmitter and receiver. In this case, if I want to take input one, on my stage box and route that to channel one on my mixer that's here you see on the left that's channel one for the mixer and then up top that's uh, channel one on my TO so basically I just put my mouse cursor in that location and check the box and then it's done that audio is now routed so any audio source that's plugged into that input is now available on that channel on my mixer same thing with my TF1 I have my I have also have a, a Yamaha TF1 if I want to send that same channel to the TF1, I'll basically just check that box under the TF1 destination. Now say we want to go the other direction. I want to send my program audio, the final mix, from my TF3, which is my main, again, my main mixer, and I want to send that over to my, into my intercom system. So I'll open up my intercom as the destination, the TF3 is the source, and I want to take the stereo mix, stereo left, and send that over to the program left input on my Behringer mixer. Again, just check the box. In this case, it's already done, but for the sake of discussion, I'll uncheck it and then check it again. So routing audio from my Yamaha mixer to my intercom is really that simple. It's really just a matter of checking that box. And again, as I mentioned previously, you can check, is, check the boxes for as many destinations as you want. So any source can feed any number of destinations. Now, I say that you can actually send it to as many destinations as you want. There are some technical limitations with that. Each Dante device supports a certain number of what they call flows. A flow is basically a combination of up to four channels of audio. Anytime a Dante device sends audio, it sends in flows. And each flow, again, can contain up to four, four channels. If you only send one channel, it's using one flow. You send two channels, it's using one flow. Three channels, four channels, that's all one flow. As soon as you get to the fifth, out fifth channel that you're sending, that creates a second flow. And as mentioned, most devices have a limit on how many flows that they can actually create. These AVO adapters that I have, they can do two flows in and two flows out. So normally that means you could only send audio to two different destinations, two different mixers, or a mixer, uh, a mixer and one, another one of these AVO units. But they have a way to actually work around that limitation. They have what they call a multicast flow. And let me show you guys a multicast flow that I've actually got up. I've actually got set up. My Yamaha TF3 actually supports up to 32 flows, so I don't technically need to do that with this device. But you can see that I am sending my stereo left and right channels to multiple destinations. So I've got it sending to one of my AVO, my XLR line level one analog, and then I've also got it going to one of my USB adapters. The same program is being sent into my intercom system. It's also being sent to one of my computers. Also, it would be very common for me to send it to a destination inside of a venue, so may probably send it to one of my TO units as well. Now, in order to keep the network bandwidth down to a minimum, they've created this feature that's called a multicast flow. Normally, Dante is sent in what they call a unicast flow, so every device that's sending audio has to send a new copy to every device that's receiving it. The multicast flow allows you to send one copy that goes out to everything on the network, which keeps the total amount of bandwidth that's being used on your network down to a minimum. And all devices that support Dante actually do support multicast flows. 
in order to create one of those things from within Dante Controller, you'll double click on one of the devices, and then you can go over to this Transmit tab, and you'll see your list of channels here. And you can see that I've actually got one multicast flow going here. In order to create one, you'll go up to this, this button here, and then you'll check off the channels that you want to include in the flow. So I'm in for this example, I'm going to do channels 1 through 4, and I'm going to go ahead and say Create, and now Channels 1 through 4 are now part of a multicast flow that's going out to the network to everything that wants to subscribe to it. The multicast flow counts as one flow no matter how many destinations you actually have. Again, if you're sending the same audio to many destinations, a multicast flow is a great way to handle that. You take a look here. I'll go ahead and delete my old one. I have a multicast flow that's always been defined, which has my matrix 4 mono, stereo left, stereo right, and subwoofer feeds. My matrix 4 mono is basically just a monaural copy of my left and right audio. And then, of course, I've got, got my stereo left and right. And I've also got the subwoofer in there as well. So it really becomes trivial for any device on the network in order to get a copy of that where I'm not actually adding to the number of flows that are coming out of my Yamaha mixer. Now, a multicast flow actually can hold up to six channels of audio instead of the normal four that are used as part of a unicast. So you're able to actually make better use of your network bandwidth by using multicast flows. Now, the downside to this is a multicast flow gets sent to every device on your networks, so you can eat up your network bandwidth pretty quickly. The unicast flows only go to the devices that are actually receiving that audio, and so if I'm sending audio to a mixer with a unicast flow, that same audio doesn't go anywhere else on the network and doesn't consume bandwidth going to any other device. So let's take a look at the Dante controller software. And I'm going to route some audio from my TF3 that's part of the trailer into my TF1 that I've got here and so that we can actually build a, a separate mix on the TF1. Okay, so I'm going to take my microphone that I'm talking into right now and I'm going to route that to the TF1 that I've got sitting on the desk. Now that microphone is going into my TF3 mixer and so we want to go from the Dante transmitter, the TF3, go ahead and open that up. And then I'm going to be sending it to my TF1. It's the destination or the receiver down here. So I'll open that up there. And then my microphone is plugged into channel 13 on my TF3 mixer. And in this case, I want to send it to channel 25 on my, t on my TF1. So start with channel 13 on the top, channel 25 on the bottom. Find that where that grid matches, where it lines up, and then check the box. And then just like that, I've actually got access to my microphone audio on my TF1. And if we come over to the TF1 software here and look at channel 25, if I open this up, you can see on the, there it is, there's my audio. It looks like it's a little bit hot, so I probably, probably should turn that down on the TF3. But my audio from my microphone is now available on channel 25 of my TF1 without having to run any sort of audio cables. It's all being done over Dante. Now earlier, I actually routed my left and right stereo mix for my TF3 into channels 29 and 30 on my TF1. And so you can see that here. You can see that those level meters are moving on that one as well. Now, one other piece of software that I should mention is something called Dante Via. This is a piece of software from Audinate. It's uh, not free, and it's not necessarily inexpensive, but it allows you to do some cool things with routing audio in and out of specific software on your computer. So let's just jump in and take a look. It's going to make a lot more sense that way. For this example, I'm going to play some music out onto the Dante network. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up this folder that has some music from the YouTube audio library. And then I'm just going to double click on one of these things and then that's going to open the Groove Music app, the de default music app in Windows 10. With that software running, Dante Via sees that there's some software running on the computer that's providing an audio source. And so it makes that available as a possible audio source. Now earlier, I already checked this, this a switch here in order to turn on Dante for that software and what that will do is expose the Groove software as a Dante source on uh, inside the Dante controller. So I open that up, come up here to NUC3 which is the computer that I'm on and open that up you'll see that we have Groove Music Left and Groove Music Right. So that just that one particular software application is now a Dante source that's on the network. And anywhere on the network that I want to be able to play that music I can now route that as a source. So I can go into my Dante uh, configuration for my Yamaha TF3 and then I come down here to say channels 5 and 6 on that mixer and then route 
the left and right for the Groove Music to those channels on my mixer. Now those audio channels are available on my mixer going through the Dante VIA software. That connection actually goes the other direction as well. So if you have a piece of software that can record audio, you can turn that on in Dante VIA as well and then route any Dante source on your network specifically right into that application without having to use the Dante virtual, virtual sound card. Now Dante VIA is licensed a little bit differently than the Dante virtual sound card software. It's a little more expensive, it's $49.95 but you can actually move that software from one computer to another as needed. So you'll have to deactivate it on one computer before you activate it on another, but you are allowed to move it around from one computer to another. So that makes it a little more affordable in, ter in terms of something that you need uh, in multiple places at once. Now, Dante isn't used just with mixers and stage boxes and computers. There's other devices that are out there too. As mentioned earlier, I'm actually using it for intercom in my trailer, and I recently picked up this Body, body pack, this belt pack uh, from a company called Studio Technologies. This is the Model 372A, and it basic, basically provides an intercom interface, a belt pack, for a Dante network. So, in terms of how it's connected, I just connect in to the Ethernet jack on one side and then plug in the headset there, and then I've got a body pack that allows me to interface with my intercom. So adjust the volume for the headphones there and then press the talk button in order to talk to other people that are on uh, the intercom system. That's being routed through my Behringer X32 which is a mixer I picked up specifically for doing intercom on my network. Now this, has, so how does this get powered? So a lot of these devices including the AVO, AVIO adapters that I showed earlier get power over Ethernet. So you have a, an Ethernet switch that actually uh, supports PoE power over Ethernet. And then you just basically plug these devices into that switch and then all of a sudden they're not only getting data, not just control data, but also audio data, they're also getting power from that as well. So that's how this belt pack is powered. It's powered actually through its Ethernet cable. It makes it really easy to set up. So you're just running one cable from here to your network switch and then plug in your headset and you're ready to go. So very cool technology, and because it's Dante, you're getting very, very high quality audio. The same 48 kilohertz, 24-bit audio that you get with other Dante devices as well. That helps, in this case, to have a better sounding intercom than you would get otherwise. This belt pack actually shows up like any other Dante source on the network. So I've got my DJP belt pack A01. Open that up. There's the talk. So this is the audio coming from the belt pack. And then it actually receives audio on two channels. So in this case, I've got it coming from my intercom, I have my primary mix, and then a secondary mix that are being routed to the two channels within the device. And then I can use the software that comes with the device in order to determine whether that audio is heard on the left and or right channels. So very cool, a lot of flexibility, remotely controlled over the network. Very, 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 very cool stuff. Dante is not the only technology like this that's out there. There are other competing technologies that, that are there as well. So its the biggest competitor, in, at least in terms of similar capabilities, is something that's called AVB. It's, it's an open source standard, so you don't have to pay a license in order to use it like you do with Dante. However, uh, it re does require spe uh, specific and special networking equipment in order for that to work. Whereas Dante works with your standard Ethernet switches, you don't need anything special there. The AVB standard does require special hardware and isn't as widely available and it's not as widely used as, as Dante happens to be. There are other standards that there's out there as well. Uh, Dante is by far the most popular and the most well known of the ones that use Ethernet. There are also some standards that will go over Cat5 cabling but don't use Ethernet or IP. Um, A AES50 is one of those. Now, because Dante is standard IP, it can be run over any standard Ethernet interface. And here in my trailer, I run my Dante over my, the same fiber connection that I use in order to get a networking in and out of a venue. In fact, it actually piggybacks on the same fiber that I use for my internet connection. So I don't have to run separate fiber, separate fiber. I don't have to run any separate cabling. It all just goes over the same cable that I already have in place for other networking uses as well. I do have it running on a separate VLAN in order to isolate that traffic. You don't necessarily want traffic from your main network interfering with your audio network and vice versa. So Audinate recommends very strongly that your Dante network be, be separate from your regular uh, local area network if you possibly can. That said, they can work together just fine. 
Dante does tell switches, intelligent switches, how to prioritize its traffic over others so that you don't get audio dropouts, even if, say, for example, somebody's transferring a large file over your LAN. There is one thing that you probably want to watch out for with Dante. It's not compatible with a feature that's called Energy Efficient Ethernet, EEE. And so if your network switch happens to support EEE, you're going to want to disable that because it does prevent Dante from working properly. I accidentally bought a switch that had that feature on it, and I found that my Dante devices on that switch would go offline in a matter of a couple of minutes. And even going into the menu and disabling the feature, it still didn't work. So if you're looking at a switch that has the EEE feature, I would definitely steer clear and buy something else instead. But other than that, you can use pretty much any Ethernet switch that you want. I can't mention Dante without also talking about AES67. So AES67 is an industry standard protocol that's been agreed upon by a bunch of different manufacturers for sending audio across a network. Dante is not AES67, and AES67 is not Dante, but they can work together. And the advantage you get to that is you can take audio from a Dante device and send it using AES67 to other devices that support AES67. There are a bunch of other protocols that have adopted AES67, and you can, using that technology, you're able to send audio between different competing network, uh, uh, audio network technologies. So that's something that you need to do. You need to interface Dante into somebody else's audio network. There are ways of doing that, even using just software without having to purchase additional hardware. I know it's tempting to try to use Dante over Wi-Fi, because Wi-Fi is Ethernet, right? Well, the trouble is Wi-Fi is it's what similar to Ethernet. It has enough little quirks about it and enough latency and other things that are going on that Dante is not supported over Wi-Fi, and it's definitely not recommended that you try and, and try and make that work. I've heard stories of people that have actually tried it and had it work okay, but the bottom line is if you want something that's going to be reliable, you probably want to avoid trying to use Wi-Fi anywhere as part of the Dante uh, transport for your audio. You know, if you do use it, you're probably asking for trouble and it'll experience all sorts of problems. So there you go, kind of a summary of what Dante is and some of the ways that it gets used and some of the ways that I use it here in my own trailer and some of the productions that I actually work on. It's a very, very cool technology. And as mentioned, it has totally transformed the way that I handle audio within uh, the productions that I do. It's just awesome being able to send audio to and from a venue over a single fiber. It's awesome being able to send audio to and from computers here in the trailer without having to actually connect any audio cables. It's just all going over the network. It's also awesome being able to take one single source and send it to multiple destinations without having to use splitters or distribution amplifiers or anything like that. And the other really cool thing is being able to record individual audio channels on a computer without having to get an expensive audio interface and just having that come over the same Ethernet connection that you're using for your internet or whatever else. So if you guys have questions about this, you can leave those in the comment section down below. I will do my best to try and answer, although I would ask the community to try and help and weigh in as well. I just don't have the same time, amount of time that I used to in order to address all the comments that are coming in. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I try and do content related to video production about once a week, pending availability, based on all the projects that I have going on. If you find this sort of content interesting and want to help support the channel, we do have memberships that are available, so click on the Join button down below. That's very much appreciated. And one interesting thing about this particular video is that I made the the, the taping of this video available to members of the channel and so we've had a number of people watching on YouTube as I've prepared and recorded this video and that's maybe maybe a perk that I consider doing even more in the future in addition to that you also get more behind the scenes for events that we actually shoot and we actually will be doing more live streams specifically for supporters of the channel as well so one other thing I'll mention before I go I've set up a Discord server for discussing all things related to video production. If you want to join us there, that's djp.li slash discord, D-I-S-C-O-R-D. And we've actually got a growing community there that's very active, and we're talking about all things related to video production. And the community there is very helpful about helping other people solve problems and figure out what gear that they need for uh, particular problems that they're running into. So anyway, that said, thanks everyone for watching, and have a fantastic day.